Coming up on this episode, I review the Lethal Weapon films and potentially or try to make the case as to why they could be New Year's movies. A. V. N. It's headphones nailed! What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing my review for the four Lethal Weapon films. And as I was watching the films, I got to thinking that if Die Hard 1 and 2 are Christmas movies, then would that make the Lethal Weapon films New Year's films? So I watched the films, overall they generally hold up except for the lack of cell phones, so a lot of the times when you have the bad guys going after the cops and no one knows where anyone is it feels like a lot of that problem could have been solved with cell phones or better equipment just feels like it's easy to get out of touch it was get easy to get out of touch in general with all of the various um ish, um problems that they were having but in general the films hold up the one thing actually that doesn't hold up is mel gibson's hair in the first three films but they resolved it in the last one so it worked out and ultimately the films round out with both of the characters being too old for their jobs so I think the films generally hold up, like I keep saying, um, as far as the comedic um, efforts, the team up with uh, Mel Gibson and Danny Glover, um, and then the various supporting cast that they add over the course of the films in the form of um, um, Leo Getz, uh, Lorna, the chief being in all the films. So in general, when you watch the films, um, definitely watch them in order because it does progressively increase the insanity of things and the various things that are happening so more of a cop version of how the fast and the furious films have gotten over the course of um all of those nine films so if they continued making the lethal weapon films as a franchise and gotten into you know lethal weapon 15 it would have basically been the two characters continuing to get too old for their jobs and um general and basically just more crazy and insane things happening and then Riggs continuing to play various pranks on Murtaugh. So with that out of the way, um, like I, as I mentioned at the top of the show, that I got to thinking that Lethal Weapon or at least the films could potentially be New Year's films and the closest that I got was that with a new with New Year's you kind of have that kind of renewed hope for the upcoming year you want new things to happen uh, or you want new and better things to happen in your life potentially new events are going to be happening um and you have general positivity for the future um and in these films it i feel like they kind of unofficially as a side thing or inadvertently come across this kind of progression in the film so with the first one you have Riggs mourning the loss of his wife um, considering suicide and then ultimately being teamed up with Danny Glover who's working on his retirement and ultimately doesn't retire and Riggs moves away from the whole idea of suicide because of their team of working together. Uh, Riggs sees what Murtaugh has and he's he now has a new purpose to life via uh, Riggs's or via Murtaugh's family. They welcome him in with open arms so it's one of those things where the first one is Riggs having that hope of a bright and positive future while also being able to mourn the loss of his wife. Um, with the second one, um, it's kind of more of just a sequel to the first one, but we have uh, Leo gets his or Leo gets his character is kind of along the lines of starting a new life, leaving, getting out of his old life, and you know turning a new page, going legitimate and. Um, having a new start that way but then also the flip side is uh, Murtaugh's son's friend who got into the drug life and his son who's actively avoiding it understanding that school is a way to go and all of that so kind of doing the right thing and it's kind of 
I don't want to say it's excess baggage because that sounds harsher than it is, but it's one of those things where Murtaugh's son has to um, mourn the loss of his friend, but also deal with the reality of the life that his friend chose and how hard and I actually like the idea that Murtaugh and his son had those moments where Murtaugh understood and had to de deal with shooting his son's friend and telling his son that or trying to get across to his son that he didn't want to do it it's hard for him he was doing some his friend was doing something he shouldn't have and it's it tore is basically touring, tearing him up inside and it's one of those things that we don't really see very often in films um so i actually liked those particular scenes but it, um that was a kind of more somber version of that um in the third film i want to say is where we have i want to say part of the second film but more into the third film was where we have our murta in his new house um kind of upgrading his life and dealing with all of that, um, building and basically building a better future, especially with all the damage that happens to his house and his boat over the course of the films. So nothing major there. And then of course, rounding it out with the final film as far as Murtaugh having a baby, marrying Lorna, and then uh, Rianne also having a kid. And then ultimately Murtaugh kind of, or sort of turning a page, which they didn't really bring they did the half of the half of it well, where he didn't want Ian to marry a cop, but slowly accepting um, Butters as his son-in-law. So kind of turning the page there. But all in all, the last film was probably the most New Year's-ish, just because you have everyone turning a new leaf as far as Lorna and Rianne having a baby. So kind of having that hope for the future. So as far as thinking if the Lethal Weapons films are New Year's related, I probably want to say they're 50 to 75 percent there. Um, but so it's kind of more along the it's more subtle as far as um, or more subtle than the Die Hard films as far as being new, as far as Lethal Weapon being a New Year's film. But it can't the case can be made just because you have the characters progressing over the course of each film to um, change the way they were thinking, um, become better people, change the way change from how they used to be into something new and different and potentially better than they used to be. Um, the converse to that is um, Die Hard 1 and 2 are more overt and um, direct as far as um, being Christmas movies just because they take place during Christmas time. You have Christmas music, the snow, um, people say actually saying Merry Christmas and all that. So in this in Lethal Weapon, I don't think you'd be see, hear anyone saying Happy New Year, but um, you just kind of have those various elements. So it's more of an unofficial New Year's set of films versus Die Hard being actual Christmas movies. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or any particular likes or dislikes about these films, then you can con comment on this post on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews for all episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And of course, by supporting the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash PatelN01, you get um, extra content as far as... Um, um, upcoming episodes, what I'm up to as far as new stuff and all of that good stuff. So, and but thanks for tuning into this particular episode, and until next time.